Welcome gaming friends. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the solo farm for Sandswept Isles. This is a great farm for players that are tired of running around in Zergs, but are not willing to sacrifice much in the gold per hour. Other benefits include low amounts of combat time. It's quick to complete, allowing one character to complete this map in about 30 minutes, with the best results using two characters taking slightly over an hour, and that there are no event timers or event chains required to complete this farm. The requirements for being able to do this farm are going to be having Living Season 4 Episode 2, a bug in the system, a skimmer with the underwater mastery preferable for most optimal completion of this farm, a raptor, a springer, and volatile magic tools, which can be purchased from the volatile magic vendors in maps like Dragon Stand with Karma. Now that we've discussed the advantages and requirements of the solo farm of Sam Swift Isles, let's go ahead and talk about one of the most optimal routes that I've found for farming this map. From the waypoint in which you were teleported in, you're going to want to start to head northeast from this waypoint, harvesting the plant nodes, and then heading south towards the water, but stay on the northern island. Continue to rotate the northern island in a counterclockwise fashion until you make it back just south of the waypoint where you started. You're then going to continue east in the water, collecting all of the nodes that you encounter on your way. Just before you reach the far eastern side, you will encounter a small island, which you will want to get as many nodes from as possible before turning south. After a short distance, you will encounter another small island on the southeastern side. You will want to hug the larger southern island's coast initially until you are even with the northern side of the southeastern island. Then go ahead and cut across the northern shore to the southeastern island. And once you've gone down this island a short distance, you are going to want to head on top of the island to collect the defluorite nodes that are on the higher elevations. Once you're up there, you're then going to have to deal with some combat situations, and this is one of the highest points where you're going to have to do that in this zone. And then you're going to continue your way down to the southern tip of the southeastern island. And once you reach this point, you will be able to drop out and collect the fluorite nodes, which are in this area, and then you'll be able to head towards the large southern island. Finally, once you make it to the large southern island, you will then continue around it in a clockwise motion, collecting all the nodes around the shore. Only if you are not taking a second character through this map would it be advisable to collect the defluorite nodes, which are on the center of the larger southern island, but it is not necessary if you're taking a second character through due to the node cap for this map. Now that we've discussed one of the most optimal routes for farming Sandswept Isles, let's go ahead and talk about some of the key nodes you're going to need to make sure you pick up as many as humanly possible. First of all, the Defluorite nodes, the Muscle nodes, and the Elderwood nodes, as well as hitting as many nodes that are clustered together as possible due to the additional Volatile Magic you'll be getting from the Volatile Magic tools. My results are generally between 17 and 25 gold per hour. The fluorite nodes plus the strikes from the volatile magic tools will yield about 3,000 volatile magic per hour. Muscles will give you a chance to get freshwater pearls, which are usually between 75 silver and 1 gold. Currently, the elderwood and mithril are good as tier 5 materials for crafting ascended or other needs that you may have. And then generally what I do with the volatile magic is trade them for trophy shipments if I am crafting legendary gear. Otherwise, I might be trading them in for leather if I'm going to be trying to sell it out in the trading post. If you guys have any additional questions or any additional tips that I've missed in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, if you found this guide helpful, please consider leaving a like to help out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribing to the channel to help support future content. Hopefully you're all having a great one and we'll catch you next time.